still remember the day when old Mrs. Rooney died. It rained in our street for six hours. It was pretty weird. But that's how old Mrs. Rooney was. Old and weird. She was the type of mean old bitch that lived up the top of every kid's street. You know, the kind that tell your parents if she heard you swearing. The only time she ever smiled was when one of us neighbors came down with a lingering disease. Not many liked her, and now she was dead, no one even missed her. Except maybe her two sons, Tony and Jake. Jake, he was the eldest, I think. He was one of the laziest beer-drinking slobs I ever knew. Jake loathed hard work and disliked loose women who turned him down. Then, there was Tony, the bad boy of modern philosophy, who thought that Aristotle was a medium. Tony knew everything about literature, except how to enjoy it. And so it was that these two boys, bereft their dear mother's love, decided to keep the old house and advertise for a boarder. The hamstring exercise helps to elongate the muscles, which allows the woman greater leg flexibility. These sexual positions give the man maximum thrusting capability. If hands are free, direct littoral stimulation can be obtained. This type of flexibility is essential when passions are high. Come on in, it's open. Readily available. to rent. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Jake. This is Tony. Hi. The room? Uh, you've got it. Don't you want to see my references? Yeah, have you got some there? No, no, no. Don't bother. Look, let me show you the room. This way. Oh my god, it's her! Good morning, guys. Good morning, Good morning Stacey. Stacey. Some cereal. What? Guys, I've been here long enough. You both know. And we have coffee for breakfast. I am on a diet, you know. Look, will you quit cleaning up? So, do you think you'll ever take a cake? No! Good morning, guys. No! Look, um, we know there's some things around today. I was wondering if I could use that spare room. No! Stacey, you can never go into that room. Never. Good night, Stacy. Good night. Jake, we're going to have to do something about the smell up here. It's becoming rather offensive. Stacy will find out soon. Huh? Um. Yeah, well, let's just tell her the dog's been sick. Heck, we haven't got a dog. So, let's get one. I suppose we'll tell her it lives in that room. Yeah. Mother never did like dogs, Jake. You know, Mother doesn't like dogs, Jake. She doesn't like Stacy being here, either. I didn't know she said that. Jake, she's not very happy about you. Stacy, 
Sorry to keep waiting, guys. Son of a bitch! Tony! Tony! I was first. I don't find these photographs arousing at all. In fact, they're quite unflattering. That was they said before the thing, didn't they? What? What are you? A homo or something? Look at this. Now that is a woman. And that's how women look with no clothes on. Really, Jay? Check out those tits. They're great tits. Round tits. Burn tits. You have this type of better publication effects, CJ. You have no sense of the romantic. Romantic? No. Romantic? Haven't you ever wanted to grab some naked bitch by the neck and fuck her brains out? Is that how you feel about Stacy? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, her picture does it for me. Only a homo wouldn't feel that way. <laughs> Neanderthal joke. Has it ever occurred to you that in your promiscuous pursuit of women, you're merely trying to assuage your fears of sexual impotence? What? Has it ever occurred to you? Yeah. Well, why do you do it then? To assuage my theories of sexual influence. What a waste of time, Jay. <laughs> Feeling a bit tired. I might hit the sack. Uh, Good night, Jay. Good night. Yeah. I'm going to retire. Good night, Stacy. Good night, Omaha.
bench. If I can make it, then I'll make it uh, anywhere. I know, I know. We don't want to talk about it. Okay, so you're mad about it now. Stacy, this is not the time to talk about it. Okay, so as long as you didn't screw up, I don't care. I only did it for your own good. Our own good? We need our mother. I can't get by without my mom. We need somebody to be with our mother. I never did see Stacy leave. All I know about her life with the boys is what they told me. I think they miss her. They must be lonely. They'll say wouldn't ask me to move in. Everyone's going. Is it alright if I go? Can I go? Um, I can get you the sign for to let me go. Uh, oh, sorry, Dad! Sorry, I won't do it. You're the mess! Sorry, I'll clean up. Why oh. can't you watch what you're doing? I will! Sorry, Dad! 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 Thomas, your father's home. Can I go see? Shh. He's in the lounge room. But be quiet. Can I go see? Not well. Get away! Dad? Get out of here! Dad? Go! Don't come back! Get him! Thomas, Thomas, I told you! Take him away! And don't come back in again! I told you to be quiet. Why can't you ever talk? I told Look at him. Why couldn't you be quiet? I told you. I forget. To your room. As a boy, I loved my father. But then something happened. Dad? Dad? It's me. Get away from me. Get away from me. I hate you. I hate you. Dad? It's me, your son. What have I done wrong? Please tell me. Why don't you love me anymore? I hate you. I hate you. And I just hate everything about you and your mother. Oh, 
sorry, Dad. What have I done wrong? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, Dad? Dad? Hey, Dad? 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 What's happened? Dad, you all right? Dad? Are you all right? I told you to be quiet, I can't do anything right! I don't know what's happened, I told you! 
there's a lot of living I gotta do. In a time to make some of my dreams come true. Playing stars. Another morning in suburbia. The hiss of the sprinklers. The buzz of the lawnmowers. The shrill of cicadas. They're all quite similar, really. And all so boring. But on this day came his salvation. He was busted out. A spy is asked to do many things. He is Jacques Lefebvre, France's most famous master spy, springing into action on the backdrop of international espionage in one of the more exotic locations of the world. Jacques moves toward his goal with feline grace, this man-god known as Le Chet. His path is fraught with peril. Agile, he moves, not for himself, for France, for glory, and for his women who wait for Jacques's return. <coughs> Nothing will stop this master spy. So we're really a couple of nomads, aren't we? Heading into no man's land, I reckon. Okay, okay. No more puns. <laughs> Down the beach. That's right, mate. Could you fill it up with petrol tank? <laughs> Looks like your mate needs a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too right. Uh, just the petrol tanks, mate.
Hey, how about one of you takes a photo of me and my mate? <laughs> what kind of weird are you? <laughs> well, just your average, ordinary kind of weird, I guess. What kind of a weirdo are you? You've lost your car. You've lost the Joneses' gnome. What a loser. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I have taken a little holiday. Fishing here is much better than in your pond. Regards, the gnome.
Thank you. Not yet. <laughs> okay, we come to full play. Okay. The uh, England model guitar is the. Sorry, start again. Okay, this is well, see your chair crates. Maybe... Count four The Eagle Guitar's our main production line these days. Mm -hmm. That's of course a screw on neck guitar, like a, a strap. And we have basically two types. Uh, Clearly the type one and this the Type 2, the difference clearly being the starters that we have a rear amount of accessories on this guitar, no pick guard, the Type 1 is a traditional pick guard type assembly. There's a lot of options within the Eagle, the uh, first one being a choice of bridges between a, a Floyd Rose license style bridge and this one here is a, a, a prototype actually of the new one we're making. What I've tried to do here is basically make a traditional strap type bridge uh, has rollers across the, the strings here and rollers where the string exits out of the trim block and an important factor at the other end is locking machines. All this makes a fairly traditional sounding strap guitar in feel and in terms of sound and response and uh, it's a little bit of an area that I think has been left in unlift in the market. Oh, yeah, sure. So tell me about the neck, Nelson. The neck? system we use on all of our guitars. It consists of a three-piece laminate. The idea being that we basically saw up a piece of wood and put it back together again so that the grain runs more vertically in the neck rather than the general horizontal pattern you see in production, large production necks. This gives it a lot more stability and a faster response time and quite a lot better sustain as well. Mm. What's next? We'll stop for a moment and have a think. <laughs> the Eagle guitar is our most commonly made solid body electric these days, and there's quite a lot of options within it, and, and we're pretty happy making it in that format. Uh, we have a choice of three different fingerboards in ebony, rosewood, and maple. Of two different body materials generally, uh, with others on option, and the two main ones we're using are mahogany, which is a, a mid range, mid density sort of a wood, not too heavy, not too light. And for those particularly fond of slightly lighter bodies, uh, we're using a poplar that's a fairly recent product grown in New South Wales. We're using two different bridges. This is a prototype of uh, a traditional strap style bridge we've developed recently with rollers over the saddles, rollers where the strings exit the trim block mm. and uh, lock down machines the other end. We're also using a licensed Floyd Rose style bridge as well with a fully locked down system on it. Mm. So what difference do you think the fingerboards for instance make? Very hard to describe there, you guys, you, you've uh, probably experienced yourself. The, uh, to me, I, I, I can explain it as uh, they sound a bit like what they look like. The ebony and the maple are both very close grown, dense sorts of woods, and as such, they get a fairly thick, round sound. Uh, the difference being that, to me, the, the maple is softer in sound, it's a very sweet sound, 
the ebony is somewhat faster to respond and it's got a real clear bell like top end sound whereas in between the two of them uh, I see the rosewood which is the most popular of course and uh, it's more of an open grain wood and it's more of an all round traditional strat type sound anyhow and that's what we make most of so it's sort of hard to tell the differences, really, given all the other variables on the guitar as well, because it could be affected by the, the rest of the wood that's in the neck, couldn't it? That's right. Well, so uh, the, the necks are, are pretty consistent, but uh, mixing different finger boards with different bridges and different pickups, uh, you can get thoroughly lost in the subtleties between one sort of fingerboard and another. I think most folks, by the time they get to this sort of a guitar, know what sort of fingerboard they'd like, because they've played enough guitars anyhow. But the important thing and what we enjoy is, is putting together custom orders or having within a standard model a whole lot of different ranges and options and being able to produce them in that manner. Mm. Perhaps we could have a look at uh, pickup sounds here, here and uh, you can demonstrate for me some of the variations there. Yeah, well, lately I've been really uh, impressed by the EXG. Um, control, although I guess it's been out for a while now. It's been out for a little but, while. Um, it's, it's a wonderful thing um, for when you're playing rhythm parts. Like, for instance, I, I've got the EXG turned off at the moment, and the guitar's just on, on the front pickup. So you get that sound, then you put the EXG on, say, halfway up, and what, that's, what that does is uh, boosts the top and the bottom without boosting the mid-range um, and so it doesn't tend to get too sort of... Uh, boxy? Yeah, boxy is another one of those what word do you use? But, uh, so I would hope that you can hear there that there's a bit... But at the same time, the top end doesn't doesn't go away. It's still quite clear and, and choppy. And you turn it on all the way, and you... it's to, to my mind, it's without that at all. Yeah, it sounds like a much more. Uh, there's uh, a lot more depth there, and it's also clearer, which is it's often really hard to get a, a nice crystal clear sound but also one that's still got guts behind it. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the, ten, the two ten... Good for all. Try not to fall. We started making dolphin guitars about ten years ago and the lines have changed subtly over the years and become a little bit more streamlined. I really like it for the sculpting you can do with it and, and the free form you can have. Back, yeah. Particularly that, I love that. Yeah, it's that's a nice great transition. Up the neck. So different to the, the back of a Strat or the back of a Les Paul or something where you, you get up to about there and your hand's actually reaching out over quite a bit of room. That's right, you, you have to change the technique and it's not, not easy to play amongst mm. those you know, frets up there where they're so close. It's a very compact guitar overall. A lot of people ask that it's a short scale thing because it's actually in the same size, same size scale as we're using the Eagle. But uh, strapped on, it's very ergonomically mm. balanced, comfortable, and you can move around with it easily, and it's real easy to get from one end of the neck to the other. Mm. Yeah, it feels extremely comfortable. But what I notice about it when I play it is, that, and I guess, or would guess that this is due to the plank neck, um, is it seems so even. Often you can pick up a strat, um, and this is true of the strats that you make or mm. strats that anybody makes, and you find that you know, the, the A and the D string sound good, um, and with lots of sustain anyway, and you know, warmth, and you get up to the top string, and it's just sort of fading away into nowhere. It's going to get a little bit yeah. yeah. That's right, yeah, it's much more balanced because yeah. there's no break in the circuit between the wood and the, and the strings themselves yeah. right from one end of the guitar yeah. to the other. I also know this from my knowledge of my bass, which um, I've got a dolphin bass like this, as you know, and uh, the F sharp on the bass is magic. I mean, you can hit it and it really rings out for ages, yeah. whereas if you've got a bolt on back, it's not the same. Picking up Curtis's car, sorry. Can you hold it a second while it comes in? Yep. 
Maybe July. Come to full please. So, the feelings for time, obviously, it's a real pity that everybody can't try it out, because to me, when I normally play Strats, as you know, it feels like a real machine, so, you know, Rolls Royce, it's, um, it's, it's a very good... So let's start that again. Yeah. Well, we're, we're saying Strats a lot. Yeah, it's right. It's got to confuse people. You do a thing saying play or, you know, a nice ego. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, but at the end, Straps are up. Let's keep smiling. Go with you. <laughs> I feel like a small tank. Okay, then you can't fall. Yeah, so <laughs> with this guitar noise, I just feel it's so even and it feels so slick, like this because of the cutaway and, and the trouble that you've taken to make sure that it's. Uh, Ergonomic, that's the term, isn't it? Yeah. In other words, it fits into your body really well. Oh, it's, um, everybody should try one, basically. Because after playing the bow tom neck guitar for ages, it, uh, it feels like a Mercedes or a Ferrari in comparison. You know, it just uh, feels tighter and, and yet more responsive. So. Yeah, that's how I feel about them too, I guess. But uh, I suppose it's horses for courses. Uh, uh, it's a silly guitar that. Uh, a fellow that wants to play all round guitar appreciates. It's not a bad rock and roll guitar, but I think if anything, one of, one of its faults is it's a bit too a bit too classy for rock and roll. Or it's felt that way mm, sometimes. People like things they can throw around. That's right, and the best sort of guitar you're not going to throw around like you can uh, a good old ubiquitous bolt on. Mm. Mm. Well, I reckon they were doing that, and we'll do this question. <laughs> so there you go. Rolling. So, what makes you think, or, or why did you start building guitars? Um, Love music. And uh, I started out as a teenager playing sax and piano, actually, and uh, you certainly don't think about creating a career building saxophones in this country. No, but there's a lot of us that love music that didn't end up building guitars, so... I guess the other thing was, I, uh, it never occurred to me that you could actually make a living as a musician, so I didn't grow up believing uh, there might be or there might be a musician, and uh, somewhere along the line, I... Uh, what did you grow uh, up thinking you were going to do? Well, uh, I had all sorts of troubles with that. I had a bit of an interest in engineering. Uh, my dad was a builder and joiner. And uh, I like music and animals and uh, dogs and cats and stuff like that. I mean, I wasn't too sure for a long time. And then along came Bobby Dillon in the mid-60s, and uh, I just had to put down the saxophone and learn to play guitar a little. So, the, the love of animals and all so on explains why you're here, really. I mean, it would surely be better to be doing this in Melbourne, wouldn't it, or Sydney? Or... Yes, many people have said that to me, but yeah, I'm a bit of a nature lover, and uh, I love the nature of music, the nature of wood, and it, it, it all, as I got into guitar making, uh, I had to make a serious decision on uh, where I would do it from, and uh, not being born and bred a city boy, but being, in fact, born and bred a country boy. Uh, I moved a little closer to the city, living here in Ballarat, and uh, took a pretty conscious decision to try and set up shop in a, a fairly secluded environment, and I think that's had a, had a big influence on my instrument making, because uh, one's ears get pretty well looked at after up here, and you can hear the sounds of nature all around, and I find that's pretty necessary. It's hard work, it's long hours, and... Uh, it's pretty soothing to hear the bird calls outside and the frogs chirping in the dams and that sort of thing. And you can grow the blackwood on the block, huh? That's right. Well, it was growing anyway, uh, and uh, the ones we've chopped down, actually, and, and some of which we've used in guitars, has been stuff where I've uh, wanted to make a, a water reservoir or a dam, and uh, there are trees that were about mature anyhow. Blackwood trees love lots of water. But uh, over the years also, on the hillsides around here, was uh, you've only to dig a furrow in the ground and 
pretty soon, and you also get quite a lot of blackwood saplings growing up. Make, make the ground a little bit wetter in a spot, and a lot of blackwood's growing there. Yeah. So, what did you study to become a guitar maker? Well, my, my educational background was in engineering, and uh, uh, I guess from there, I took a broader interest in physics, metallurgy. Uh, there's just such a broad range of areas that you can study in instrument making and over the years uh, just out of maintaining a real keen interest uh, you pick up bits and pieces of all of them. There aren't any real uh, guitar making schools, not in Australia anyhow, but it's, it's the sort of thing that's a, a life experience I think you grow with it. An uh, important thing is growing into the, the broad world of guitars and music uh, they're not disconnected, they progress hand in hand and I just love being involved in that area. Cut. That's a wrap. Whoa! Whoa! Come to four. Come to four. Just do the music. And don't forget to do the more afterwards. Do it now. Just like you explain something. Maybe you could flip a switch yeah. between them. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's style and panache. A bit slower. Yeah. And so I know where the wall is on the bridge. Mm -hmm. the block, mm -hmm. ah, just just direct on the north, so it's one of the block sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's also that boring system there with the knife edge. Mm -hmm. And that leads up to. Can you follow my hand up there? Mm -hmm. That wings, yeah. Well, I do it now. You got that one? Mm -hmm. So. It's a little bit slow. Yeah. Uh, like a follow up. Yeah, it's not sort of shot line in the way. Just, uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. 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 Come I'm going to put it back in Mm -hmm. a bit Um, 
repairing on two seconds. Start, I don't know if this was already being cut or not. It doesn't matter, we just need to finish touch for it. Mm -hmm. 